Any better? Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing quite well, and yourself? I'm doing very well. Um, you are currently live to my wonderful viewers. Excellent. Um, so everyone, um, on the phone now is James Dearden, who is the wonderful creator of one of my favourite point-and-click adventure games, Techno Babylon. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning to you. It's 7pm, uh, but fair enough. <sighs> So, um, I guess the first question I've got that I don't think I've ever asked you is what gave you the inspiration to write Techno Babylon? Uh, well, originally it was kind of a practice project. Uh, way, way back in 2010, I had no social life, as I still kind of don't, but um, I wanted to practice making a game, and what was the original Techno Babylon game was just the first chapter of what is now the bigger game. Okay, awesome. Yeah, because you um, you were doing it as a little hobby, and I think had released a couple of episodes when uh, the publisher What Your Eye Games picked you up. That's yeah, that's kind of kind of. Um, basically, what happened was um, I I made the first three episodes, and it got a really good response from people, and I figured, oh well, I might as well put a bigger effort into this. So I kind of ended up remaking the first part of it three or four times. Okay. Um, and on the third occasion, I took it as a demo to show Dave Gilbert, the uh, founder of Wajitai, because he was in London for Adventure X. Uh, and so I waved it in his face and he said, yes, I like this. Um, and we struck a deal. So I got to use his artists and uh, he got money from publishing it. That's amazing. Um, Thank and, you, Commander. No, not you, computer. Um, and what made you decide that you wanted to do a point-and-click adventure game and not some other kind of game? Um, really, I'd like to tell stories, and there's kind of limited potential for what you can do with narrative in other genres. Because um, within a lot of other kinds of game, story is something that is a detail which serves which serves and comes secondary to gameplay. So um, you could conceivably have a platformer without any story. You could conceivably have an RPG with no story. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, a, a point and click adventure, adventure games, things like that, story comes first. And Challenge accepted. A plot is what I was aiming to go with you know, I had a plot in mind first and foremost that I built a game after, rather than building a game first and having to make a plot to fit the game. Okay, awesome. Um, and I, I certainly thought it was a very good story personally. Um, I've I've played the game before, and I think I played it through twice before I was done. Um, I've got a question from one of the viewers who would be interested in knowing what other point-and-click adventure games that you like? Absolute childhood favourite was Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Ah, that one's brilliant. It's a classic. Uh, we've, um, we've also... Um, he says that his favourite was Simon the Sorcerer. And I have to admit, that was, that was an absolutely brilliant one. Oh, I have to admit, it's also one of the ones I've not actually ever played before. Oh, um, really? Yeah... There's a lot of them I, I I still haven't played Broken Sword. I still haven't played Simon the Sorcerer, uh, and I've only played one of the King's Quest games. So, you know, as a, a player, I'm woefully lacking in my uh, in my repertoire. But Space Quest that was another series I got a lot of enjoyment out of. Would you say that any of the ones that you played um, had influence on Techno Babylon? Beneath a Steel Sky would oh, probably yes. be the biggest influence because the style, I think we borrowed a lot of the style from it. Um, and also kind of the, me the memory switching puzzle um, we sort of nicked slightly from Beneath a Steel Sky. And uh, while we continue chatting, I just want to let the viewers know if any of you have any more questions that you'd like to ask, um, please do put them in the chat so I can ask them. Um, and uh, one earlier we had someone saying, is Techno Babylon a game that I might like? And I was mentioning, well, it's 
very much a story driven game with some puzzles. Um, I'm sure that you'd be much better able to describe it than I would. Yeah, um, I think what I was kind of in, in my in an ideal world, I think what some people have asked me to try and make is like if Deus Ex were a point and click adventure rather than a first person RPG, which is doing a huge disservice to Deus Ex because that's also one of my absolute favourites. <laughs> um, but um, if you like cyberpunk or post cyberpunk, then you know, it's probably the kind of you know, as I say, what I'm trying to do is tell a story first and foremost um, and what I was trying to do with it was well, a, lot, a lot more pl people these days, I think as, as games have a wider audience, there are fewer people who have the patience to put up with some of the nonsense that classic adventure games did in terms of um, really ridiculous puzzles, so it's a lot more streamlined than they used to be and a lot more intuitive, like more logical in plenty of ways. So you spent some time um, streamlining it for a more modern games audience? Yeah, it's not sort of... To say streamlining, you know, streamlining isn't a bad thing. In this case, it sort of made the games more accessible. And it's also not just a case of simplifying it for an audience. It's not, it's not dumbing it down. We also made sure a lot of it there's three or four ways for a particular obstacle, like, for example, getting past the door in part two. You can take any three courses of action to get through it. You can mm -hmm. blast it. You can call for backup. You can hack it. You know, dip it. Again, that's taking influence from games like Deus Ex, which are all about multiple choices. Do you sneak through? Do you talk your way in? Do you shoot your way in? You know, uh, but point and click adventures you have to play to the strengths of what they can do with it I, I'm fairly sure I blasted way blasted my way through that particular door um, and got <laughs> quite and got quite a crass comment from my partner in the game well according to steam let me see if I can figure, find out because we there is a thing that's one of the link to one of the achievements so we can tell um, we can tell what more players chose to do at that scene. Oh, that's amazing. So uh, you can actually, um, using Steam, you actually got statistics on what choices players made or how they solved we, the puzzles. We at do least, indeed. At least the multiple choice ones, anyway. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, used, uh, global, global achievements, there we are. So, um,. Uh, Yep, most people blast. No, uh, no, most people got loud to do it. Oh, the they got second, loud to do it. Second most people blasted their way through. Twenty-three percent of people blasted their way through it, and uh, sixteen percent of people uh, got called central. Ah, oh, fair enough. Um, I seem to recall that in an earlier puzzle, blasting a door was an option, which is probably why it's the first choice I went for. It's an option only if you've messed up the phone call. Ah uh, yes, that's right. So you have to mess up the phone call first before you, before you can blast your way through. Uh, that one, that came up as a sort of side effect of um, making the phone call puzzle, and then realizing that if they botched it, there would have to be a way through it afterwards. But I didn't want people to just shoot their way through to start with. Mm -hmm. so I wanted people to play with that phone call because uh, the the voice on the other end that's Dave Gilbert, the uh, producer at Watertie. Ah <laughs> uh, yes. So um. If you had any conceivable budget to make your ideal game, do you think it would still be a point-and-click adventure, or would you look at a different genre? Um, if I had a much bigger budget, I would go for something more along the lines of, of um, kind of a third-person Deus Ex, I suppose, is when we're, De Deus Ex meets Mass Effect kind of thing. Um, I like the way Mass Effect plays. Um, Maybe add in possibility for stealth. Uh, I like the way Deus Ex builds an atmosphere and an environment, and also again streamlines a lot of things well. Mm -hmm. So I would like to mix the atmosphere of Deus Ex with the gameplay of the first Mass Effect in a way. Mm -hmm. Oh, brilliant! Uh, and 
there, there are limits to what you can do with point and click. Fortunately, it's also really good for working in within what limitations I have in terms of what we're able to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, amazing. Well, um, I think I'm personally out of questions, uh, and I haven't seen any more questions on the chat. So I guess at this point, I'll oh, thank you for donating us a copy of Techno Babylon to give away. Um, good luck to everyone entering the raffle, and thank you very much for coming on and talking with me. You're most welcome. I, uh, I look forward to your future games. I'd better get on to making them, otherwise people aren't going to keep paying me. <laughs> I'd better let you go to making them then. <laughs> keep an eye out, and if anyone wants to see what's going on with Wajatai, AGS, and what everyone's making, there's a, a Adventure X in December, uh, 12th of December, which is a sort of meeting uh, um, of adventure game people. We usually have, um, I want to say celebrity, but... Uh, it's people like we had we had Charles Cecil the other year. Um he made Broken Sword. Oh amazing. Is that a uh, UK or is that an American conference? That's going to be in London. Um That's going to it's be in a, London in December. It's going to be at Goldsmiths in December. Um on the uh 12th and 13th this year. I I think I might possibly have to go to that. I definitely recommend it. You can meet Dave Gilbert. <laughs> oh, amazing. Uh, well, um, if you want to drop me a link to it, I'll um, put it in the Twitch chat so people can have a look at that. I dispatched it to your Skype. Amazing. I will um, dispatch it to the, uh, to the channel. Fantastic. The more the merrier. I recommend everyone, if you're in the UK or London come down to it because it goes on for the whole weekend and uh, as in more people we get the better amazing well um thank you so much for coming on i really appreciate it and uh so do the people who are watching i think they've really enjoyed listening to you fantastic i'll uh, i'll tell people on tw uh, twitter to come in here and get on the raffle as well yeah amazing thank you cheerio then okay thanks take care so that was James Dearden of Technocrat Games, the creator of Techno Babylon. Play some Sidewinder. Play some Sidewinder. Now playing Radio Sidewinder. <laughs> <laughs>